Ajay Dahi has worked with a huge number of artists over the years, including Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, and Brent Fayaz, whose hit track Gravity Dahi breaks down for us today. My name is Dahi, and I am a music producer out of Inglewood, California. I think for me, like, using musicians is kind of a... I'm going to say like it's a, it's a lost art in contemporary popular music. But for me, I think it's something that I've started to really recognize of like why kind of music sounds the same or why there isn't a, a style to like certain production or, or songs just because of like the musicianship of like, you know, someone who's like the best player at the guitar, the best player at the keys or the best player at the bass aren't being utilized as much um, in music and, and, and it kind of, you can kind of hear it, you know what I'm saying? You can kind of hear the style. And so for me, it was, it was, um, you know, in the last, probably the last, like really the last eight years, it was kind of been like a thing where I, I've just kind of clicked in my head. Like, no, I really need to really incorporate that into my musical production style because of it, it kind of, I can kind of detail a little bit more about like what I want in a song or what, what I feel like a song needs in, the, in regards to feeling and style. Um, and it's been, and it's actually made music a lot more fun to me to be able to work with musicians and and build like a real rapport um, with them to help kind of flush out like the entire idea of a song and, and create like really dope moments. And it's just, it's like easier to make music, I, I guess, to me. Like it's like a, it's, I never looked at myself as like the, I had to be the face of like the song or I had to be like me. I'm just like, yo, like we can all make this together and really incorporate it in different ways. And so it's something that I'm like trying to champion um, just more often in, in, in the music that I'm putting out and making and collaborating. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been a good learning curve. It's been a good learning experience to be able to do that. Cause it's, it allows me to kind of see the, the bigger picture of a song and see the bigger aspects of like what, um, uh, where we can try to, you know, break the mold in, in, in creating like real moments. So one of the first times was, I think I've, I may have told the story before, but um, one of the first times I really used a uh, musician was when we had worked on um, the Damn album for Kendrick. And I had brought in my friend Danny Keys who was who's quote his name is Bacon now, but he um, he was in New York at the time, and I've I've known Danny for years just um, from his production with my friend uh, DJ Khalil, who you know has you know done a bunch of really dope records with with Dr. Dre, Eminem, Snoop, um, you know just he's like one of my mentors growing up as a in, a, in production, and so I, I learned from him because he was. He was a heavy sample. He was a heavy sample producer, and he was like, "I can't do it no more because basically, I can't make any money, you know, sampling records, you know, because of the publishing and and um, just, you know, you know, it's just it's a it's a hard, you can obviously be successful, but it's just a it's a harder road a little bit to kind of like to to for financially to kind of keep doing it." So he was the one that was like, "Well, yeah, I just been using music, musicians to like you know recreate." you know, these ideas, or not cre create new ideas, but just like really make stuff that I can go back and sample, you know what I'm saying? So really make kind of like full song ideas and then go back and chop them and reimagine them into like different songs. So that was like, oh, I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like I didn't, I never thought about it that way uh, of just creating that way. And so Danny was one of the people who he worked a lot with. And so he, one time he was in New York and we were actually in New York at the same time uh, trying to finish up the, the last few songs of the album. And it was like, he came by. I was like, yo, Danny, he was in town. I was like, oh man, you should come by and meet Kendrick. Um, we're gonna work on, you know, the album stuff. Though. So he came by and Danny's like one of those guys where you just, you meet him, he's, he literally kind of, you ever met someone who like knows everything? Like, and just, you can ask him a question about dolphins and he'll talk about dolphins for like, two hours or you talk, you know, just like random stuff. And he's like, I, I don't know how you spend time all learning this information. But anyway, Danny came by and um, we got in a room and 
I was like, yeah, let's let's just like jam, you know what I'm saying? And jam. And and it was so cool because basically everybody was like almost like an instrument. Like I was on, what was I doing? I think Soundwave. It was me with all the people in it was in me, it was Soundwave, it was Kendrick, and and Danny. And Danny was playing the Mellotron. Either I was doing drums or he had a had a sample idea, and or Soundwave was doing drums and he was in it. But we were all kind of just playing stuff. And we literally said, you know, and I was on the mic and Kendrick was on the mic. And then we literally was like, okay, we're just going to like pick a sound and just play. And we did that for like, maybe like, I think we, we I think we started at like 11 PM and we did it all to like 5 AM. And we just recorded like a bunch of ideas. And it was amazing because literally it was just free, free flowing ideas, but it was like Danny was just playing and he was kind of finding really interesting pockets around what we were doing. And we were like, oh, that's really dope. And then um, I would sing a melody and, and we were like, oh, mark that melody down. And Kendrick would jump with it and he would, he would say the melody and find words and really find that pocket. And then like the way he would find a new drum feel to like, you know, change the tempo and doing stuff. And it was just like a really cool organic way of making songs where it didn't, you didn't feel like you were overthinking the process and you just let people play. And that was like a real eye-opening thing. I was like, oh, that's that's how I should make music all the time. Where I don't, if I go in there preconceiving an idea, thinking like, um, this is what we have to do. And I'm always going to be chasing that idea in my head of being creating, like, I'm going to, I get to that point. And it's sometimes it's hard to do that. But when you kind of go at it from a, I don't know what the hell is going to happen moment, you kind of can make some magic. And, and from that, those sessions, we end up using, we made like, I think like two or three, two or two songs came that ended up on the album it was like Ya, I think was one record. And then the other one was, um, I think XXX with uh, Bono. That was one of the records that came from just the, the jam session. And it was just like, a, you know, just us messing around for a few hours and, and just having fun. So that was, that moment kind of just opened my eyes to just like having just people who can play just and, and kind of can read the room and kind of figure, figure out where the mood is changing and going. And it was like, oh, I need to be doing this all the time. Like, it doesn't make any sense why I'm not, why I'm making music in my room by myself, just trying to beat, the, you know, the drum and play this and do that. It's like, no, I need to have like, you know, people who are really good at what they do and like help make the song better. I go through different modes of, of uh, super gear, heavy, you know, keyboards, pedal boards, guitar pedals, drum sets, you know, I'll go this way. And then sometimes I just want to work in the box and I just want to work in the computer and kind of, so I kind of go back and forth. I I don't like to be a hoarder, you know what I'm saying? I'm just having a bunch of stuff. You don't really need a lot. You just need a, a few really good hard pieces, hardware pieces that's really um, dial in the sound that you're looking for. So right now, I think the pieces I have, well, the Profit, the Profit 10, I'm never selling this one. I think this is probably like the best overall keyboard that um, it, it can sound old and sound new. It's just it's one. It's just like one of my greatest tools that I, I like. Feel like it. It's just perfect for any song that I make. I can, I can use it in different ways. Um, the Mellotron, I've, I've that's probably had that for the longest period of time. Um, just in, I've. I've um I use it on every album or every stuff that I worked on. Um and for me when I use the when I'm using like put the pedal board on top, I, I kind of it's really cool because I'm able to like um just create a sound and then I create a sound first from just like dialing and and, and picking different um effect chains and then basically from there I'll go back and then just save that setting and then figure out what, what instruments on you and just play it. And, and it sounds like a totally different instrument, which is really cool. I have, oh, I have a Jupiter 4. Uh, it's not here, but I have a Jupiter 4 that I, I, it only does like four things, basically. And that's, I, I realized when you have that, those limitations, you kind of create new sounds on it. So I love that one. Uh, the Model D uh, Moog uh, synth, I love that one. I use that all the time. I do Gen, Gen Lex is probably like my, main monitor uh source for like you know just mixing and i and just hearing stuff i think i i, I don't know i don't know why necessarily i like i was like 
I don't know, maybe, I, who had Genelix? I, I remember, I don't remember who had him first. Actually, no, I do. Khalil, my friend, Khalil had some Genelix that um, I remember listening to. And I just, I just bought, was like, yo, let me just buy, I'm just going to get some Genelix too. So I bought some. And um, yeah, they've been great. Like I've been, I've basically been working on them for the last uh, 10 years, really. So this song, Gravity, uh, by myself, um, Brent Fiaz, uh, Tyler, the creator, and Steve Lacey, um, it kind of came together from, start, it, well, it originally started out from me and Steve um, um, early on when I, Steve started to work on his album, um, me and him got together and just started um, just shooting ideas back, to, back and forth with each other. Um, and he actually gave me a folder of just guitar loops and the original song, the idea for this song started from this guitar loop um, that Steve sent me that I was like, oh, wow, this is a, this is pretty amazing. Um, and I cho- basically what I did was. That was the initial um, loop, the idea that he had, had gave me. So I've, I've always had, like, and what I do sometimes, I, I'll, I I don't really, when people ask me, do I make beats? I don't really, I don't really make beats, uh, like, at home. Like, I'll just sit at home and just, like, make a bunch of beats and make a bunch of beats and then, like, send them to other people. I don't really work that way. Not anymore as much, just because a lot of times I think I, I like to work in the session with the artists and, and kind of... Um, be able to mo- mobilize and change tracks um, while I'm in the room, just because for me it's it's better to mold the song around the artist and the way they feel rather than like give them something. Be like, this is this is the beat, run with it. So um, so it was just an idea that I had that I was holding on to um, for a while, and um, initially, you know, I was I was um, I worked I, I met Brent Fiaz, um Prior to maybe like a maybe like six months before we actually got in the studio, just me and him from a, a, a music camp he did, um, where he had a bunch of different producers and writers come in, and you know we got a we just caught a really cool rapport with each other, and he like you know the way I think about music and the way I, I thought about you know, like production, and as well I, I was a really big fan of like his earlier albums from Sonder to um, from in his group in Sonder and also his solo work. Um, and I was like, yeah, like I'm, I'm whatever you're going to do, like let's, let's work together and do some stuff. So, and then, um, so eventually we, we just got together and was like, okay, let's just like work on, work on a song. And we were doing this, um, uh, it's funny, like we somehow things lined up where we had actually had an opportunity to work on a song. We had collaborated to work on this campaign called Song From Scratch by, um, this company, uh, called, um, Yours Truly, who I actually worked with them early on um, years ago um, with this artist named Tink and uh, Kalela, and we did a song together. And basically, they bring an artist and a um, they bring an artist and a uh, producer together, and they work on a song. So this was this was an opportunity. It was like, oh yeah, let's let's work on that song together. So um, we basically yeah we got in the studio, and uh, it was kind of a same situation where kind of like now where the camera's on you and you're on the spot and you have to make a song. And um, so, yeah, it was, it was cool. Like, it was really cool because basically we got in the studio and we I was just playing him a bunch of ideas. And so this was one of the ideas that had popped up. And he was like, oh, yeah, I, I love that guitar loop. Um, can you um, can you um, play it for me a few times? So he played it for me. And then, like, we kind of changed the structure of the song a little bit where it, it kind of plays kind of get the, the, the main loop of the song kind of plays for a few rounds and why he can kind of write like a certain uh, verse line on it. Where well, this loop, this, this part of the song kind of loops over it a few times and then he sings it again. So 
Yeah. Yeah. So he was like, okay, that it kind of like a a bar wave where he can write the hook. And so I I'll play you his verse from the hook. And that was like, okay, this sound, this seems like it could work. Mama, but you want me home. I get you what you want. But you want me alone. You held me up when I was down and out. But I don't want you waiting round for me. Yeah, so that was like a that was basically like the first thing he wrote um, when we were kind of suited. I was like, oh yeah, this feels like kind of kind of magical or special moment. And it's funny because like from a writer from a standpoint of like how he saw the record, he definitely I didn't see it that way. It was like the way I always thought it was a kind of like a different structure of just like you know just like regular eight bar loop, eight bar loop, eight bar loop kind of hook area but not but he kind of saw the the way he kind of I guess he the way he wrote the the lyrics he, he felt like it needed like almost like a like a uh a pre-part a pre-section to go into the like the hook but the whole thing kind of all together sounds like hook because he we kind of repeat that section throughout the record and um yeah it was it was it was cool like it was definitely one thing where I was like oh this this feels um, kind of unique and it, I think it kind of can, it stands out so basically from there I just started to build the record around um, what he was doing and so I added um, this drum loop that I made that I was like oh this could probably it could, this could fit and we could when we once we build out we can kind of bring up the energy um, And then what I, and a lot of the times what I do is, like I said, for me, when I, when I, way I work, I don't really have a bunch of beats, but I, I, I literally just have just tons of parts. So like everything in this song was kind of like um, me just just doing, you know, days where I'm just doing drum loops. I'm just literally making drum loop sounds or one day I'm just making, you know, chord progression sample ideas or one day I'm just doing, um, you know, effect chains or something like that. And all, all in all, I kind of would bring them together into like one song where I'm just like, oh, like we'll try different grooves and stuff. And I don't know how to just grab it, but sometimes I feel like drums, either you should start the record with a drum or you should only you can end the record with a drum. Because sometimes in between, I feel like um, you kind of are stuck with whatever the drums tell you to do in the songs, um, just because I feel like the rhythmly, rhythm, rhythm and just like pacing and what everybody can do, you kind of, it kind of really guides everything. So for this one, it was, um, once we kind of had the guitar loop in place and he, what he's saying, I was able to kind of figure out whatever the groove was and um, it worked out really well, just from a sense of like the, the, the 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 pace the the energy to drive but also to just kind of like the the feel of it made the record sound I guess kind of happy when it's really really which is really really dope way so um, and that was like a big part of how the record kind of uh, became from there um, the other other drum loop I added after that section um, kind of brings the energy up. Uh, into the, the start of the verse, so I'll play that part. But you want me alone, you held me up when I was down and out. But I don't want you in round for me. Sub bass under that as well. Mm. 
Yeah. So it was like the basic. The, those three. Those three things were kind of like made the track uh, what it was. Um, and I, and I like that too. Like sometimes I realize there's there's records that I, I you only need you only need three ingredients. Um, you, if you add too much, it kind of loses its, its power. And, and sometimes I'm I'm really good at just over over cooking something, and it's like it kind of loses the sauce. So this is something that I was like I really wanted to make sure that I didn't I didn't lose the the you know the kind of like strength of the record from just just keeping it simple and having the vocals be kind of like the highlight and the melodies that he was singing and and just let the music be the bed of everything, which is really cool. So the drum beats, I'm I kind of. I, like I said, I have my own kind of system of making drum loops, but a lot of it is just me um, just creating uh, different chains uh, from different, uh, I guess what I'm saying, different uh, just plug-in sorts. Um, I, like, I, I'll show you. It's just a chain. It's just like a multi, multi-chain multi um yeah, it's in a lot of these two are just Ableton plugins that I'll, I'll use just actually to start with, um, which are really cool. Um, and then I'll use a lot of the, I use a drum bus a lot um, that you know adds a lot of really cool um, bottom and um, kind of tight tightening the drums is really cool. Um, and then from there I use um, I use a lot of sound toy uh, plugins from the decapitator to the um, uh, effects rack ones. Um, I use a lot of the good. Um, I use a lot of the good Hertz plugins, from the tone control to the tube com tube compressor to the. I love this one as well. This one's like a a low a low high uh, plugin that I use for like bottom end, but also to like just. Uh, high tone frequencies as well. Uh, this one is really cool for making called Lucy. It's like it makes your plugins really like artifactly digital sounding stuff as well. And, and a lot of the source the source sound drums are just like um, just a bunch of MIDI MIDI sound kits that I that I found, and I I'll do it in the box from just my own kind of um, one shot sounds and stuff, and just kind of create from there. Um, and it's and for me, it's like a different. I have I have chains of just like total like just MIDI patterns and stuff. That I'll just play and put them in there and like really um, try to create new drum loops out of them. But there's I mean there's so many different ways. Like, but generally speaking, like a lot of lot of the effect stuff that I'm using is in the box. Like I just kind of do it in here, um, just create a chain, save it as a preset, and then cool like bring them bring them back depending on what style of the record I'm doing and, and whatnot. So a lot of the loops that I'll have, I'll print them out, save them, and put them in a folder and just kind of um, uh, use them. And the cool thing now, I don't really I don't really go back. Once I mix the record, the drums I have a certain way, I don't really go back and change them. I kind of have a rule too where I just I kind of just leave it as is. And if I if I go back and change it, it kind of it'll lose its sound. So once it's printed, it's kind of done. You know what I'm saying? And I like that kind of like, this is what I had. I got to work with type of, type of energy too. So, and then from there we, you know, the record kind of uh, set for for almost. I feel like it's the record set for like a month or something. I can't remember how long it took, but we had we were just trying to figure out. Brent had originally did another second verse of the record, but then we were like, man, what if we dope if we get um, you know somebody else to do a verse? And so we one of the first people we thought of was Tyler. Tyler, the creator, as like, you know, just it, the song kind of fits in his orbit just sonically and just like the, the feel of the record and just where it, um, what it just feel like a perfect fit. And so they had, they had actually met before, I think Brent and, and, and Brent and um, Tyler. And uh, I don't know if they had played him that record or whatnot, but we had, um, yeah, we got the verse from Tyler probably a little bit afterwards and um we put in the song and yeah it was it just felt like a perfect fit like it just felt like um like like a sandwich like you know like the, everything 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 complemented each each everything each other really well and um kind of just created a really cool moment the the biggest i mean the biggest thing we did on the vocals was 
was um I don't I don't have the vocal session in this particular uh track because I think we did everything in Pro Tools and I just kind of had uh, had the two track vocal bunch of mine. But a lot of the things I remember we did for the vocals was we're trying to play with a lot of um uh let me play right quick. Let me see how what we did if I can listen back. But let me see. But you want me home? Huh? Come on, but you want me home. I get you what you want, but you want me alone. Baby, I'm acting. You held me up when I was down and out, but I don't want you waiting around for me. I don't want you waiting too long. Too long. Too long. Too long. Too long. I don't want you waiting too long. She hold me down like gravity. We on the front page of them blogs. Would you be mad at me? So like the big, the biggest thing with this record was like trying to. We, we were funny because we were trying to figure out a lot of like the format of the tones of like you know, okay, we want we want we want him to rap, but. We were like, we don't, in his regular voice, we were like, that's cool to just have it as like regular tone. But we were like, what if we just, you know, had his voice sound a little bit kind of deep, you know, deep throat tone, like, you know, like sound like you, you, you know, you're trying to hide his identity type of kind of vibe. So we was like, oh, let's try it. And I don't know, it kind of gave it a, it gave the record a, a obviously a weird kind of energy, but it still kind of worked in an interesting way because I, I was, I was, I, in my head, I was like, I, I think it could work. I, I feel like it's, the record's kind of not weird enough, but I feel like it gives the space to be experimental. Like, it, it feel like it, it wasn't like a traditional pop record, even though it is a pop record. It just feels like, oh, you can, you can kind of make a character out of it. Um, which, if, if we did a music video for it, like, it just feels like, it feels like a kind of a acid trip, you know what I'm saying, type of feel of a, of a song where you're just like on drugs or you're kind of seeing stuff, you're seeing colors and bright. So you can kind of experiment with the tones and stuff like that. So a lot of it was just like us trying to find the right, perfect um, format type of film. I think we were using, I know, I definitely feel like we use, um, uh, I use it all the time, but use the Alter Boy. And that's like a plugin we use a lot of just to kind of, um, uh, just to, uh, just to get it right of just like, you know, messing with the format sound and, and really getting getting it getting the tone and the pitch right. And um yeah, it, it sounded really cool. I think that and and then with the right amount of like, you know, har harmonic uh melody parts that he put in the background and and with um him singing the lead vocal, it, it worked well. You know, so I feel like that was a big part of the the song that you know, you don't really know if it'll work, but I feel like it it nobody was annoyed by the voice, which was really cool. And people kind of still could be able to sing along and get where we were going. But that was like the biggest debate that we were kind of like discussing in regards of like how to make it work. Because we, we we tried the regular tone, like something was kind of missing him about the song. And then when we kind of pitched it, he kind of gave it a, oh, just an interesting character. And then we kind of just went along with it. So, yeah, we did. We almost did, we basically did a whole entire song um, with him doing the first verse and second verse. And he rapped basically two verses. And something about the record itself felt like it's good, but it's not it's not a home run yet. And I don't know if it's because we, I thought his verse was good. I thought his verse was really, really good. I just didn't, I was like, you know, I'm big on like tone, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes like in, in how you sound on the record is like super important to me. Like I feel like you could be saying the most dopest stuff in the world, but if you if you don't sound right it's not going to connect you know what I'm saying and so I think just making the, his voice sound more interesting I feel like was going to make it people pay attention to what he was doing in the song and then um but that was a that was a kind of debate for like a few weeks you know what I'm saying it's like finished and that and, and to be honest that kind of made us really also ask about the feature aspect of like oh who who should we do do the second verse with, and I was like, oh, we should get Tyler. And I was like, oh, because he feels, he's kind of has a natural tone of that deep tone voice anyway. So it was like, oh, let's 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 work with that. And so, um, yeah, it, it kind of like I said, it kind of just made sense of like, okay, he's rapping like this already in the, in the first verse. Second verse, he's kind of 
we need someone to kind of in that same world, but has a totally different perspective and whatnot. And it kind of just came together where we got this sweet hook area, and then it kind of goes down to this like deep tone rap voice, which is really cool. So, um, but yeah, it wasn't. It definitely was like regular for the first time. The great thing about this record was like I knew, I knew that the music was really special, and the guitar, the guitar sounds are really special, and just the whole piece. I I, I just didn't know how catchy the record was um, until it actually came out. This was like, just because when it came out, it was like a, it 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 kind of it, it charted pretty well, like on the, on the streaming platforms and YouTube, and just like you know you can. I've I've been in this you know business for for I, for at least like I said like now um, f- fifteen years, and just to see you know you know when a song kind of hits where just like everybody starts texting you or or you know you're getting linked to some uh, uh, a mention or something like that, and it was like oh wow this is really hitting in a really cool way where. Um, I think it felt like a really organic song in a moment and, and people kind of felt um, connected to the song like in a really positive way. So, um, yeah, it was it was it was um, definitely one of my highlights for sure. I just and it, it was like the first time as an artist myself of being featured as an artist on a song, which is really amazing as well, too. That's all for now. If you like what you saw, please be sure to like and share it and subscribe and click the bell icon so you know when we upload new content to our YouTube. Also find us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.